So you want to learn how to render, huh? Well, congrats. You just clicked on the best video there is. We're going to cover what it is, how to learn it, why it makes me want to jump off a building, but most importantly, how to fake it. Because, let's be honest, nobody wants to stay shackled at their desk for 8 hours straight, rendering each and every single hair on their character's forearm. Just a quick little thing before we get started, this video is sponsored by... Absolutely nobody! Gotcha. On a serious note though, I'd like to take a second to thank everyone that appreciates my videos. Knowing that they're helping someone out really means a lot to me. For those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Victor, I make art videos, and uh, this one is about rendering. Let's begin. Okay, so let me ask you something. Quick question. This is an artwork I've made recently. Now, would you say this is rendered or not? Time's up. And the truth is that there isn't really a right answer because it depends on your definition of rendering. To me, this artwork is not properly rendered. And that's one of the first secrets to becoming good at rendering. You have to obsess over refining your art so much and put rendering on such a high pedestal that you get to a point where an unfinished, unpolished piece of yours still looks to others like it's clean F. And now, I'm not claiming to be that good, but you get the point. It might sound a bit toxic, I know, but let's face it. Rendering is basically nothing more than a flex. It's that stage when you combine all of your art skills to make the best possible thing you're capable of making. Problem. We can't do this consistently all of the time because as artists, we all have our highs and lows. So the next best thing is to get your skill level so high that an average artwork of yours is still above average in the grand scheme of things. Like this is just straight up some anime type shit. Now a little disclaimer before we move on. There is no mandatory order to learn stuff in your art journey, but it's highly recommended for you to have at least some degree of skill in the basics before you work on your rendering. Because, you know, people usually look at super polished artworks and go, Wow! Like, look at the details and uh, think it's good because of the rendering. Well, it's actually the composition, the shape design, the colors, all of the art fundamentals applied properly that do the heavy lifting and... The details are nothing more than the cherry on top. With that being said, the second thing to work on to achieve peak rendering is to understand and define materials. Sounds complicated, huh? Well, that's because it is. But I'ma try and dumb it down as much as I can. When you render an artwork properly, the water actually looks like water. The steel looks like steel. Same for the glass, the fire, the wood, and so on and so forth. This is because all materials respond differently to light and are therefore unique and recognizable. Now you might think that this can be achieved purely with textures, but that's not the case, because materials have many other qualities other than texture to consider. Are they reflective? Are they opaque? Transparent? Translucent? Absorbent? And so on and so forth. People tend to underestimate the importance of this because often materials can be assumed by context. For example, if I paint a sword, even if I don't render it well, you will still assume it's made of steel because you know swords to be made up of steel. But a properly rendered material goes beyond context. Actually, it even goes beyond color. And that's a good thing because it means that you can study rendering and color separately. And there I was a couple of years ago, my art sucked major a**, and I was so scared of color and rendering, thinking of them as two inseparable things. Well, it turns out, they're not. Actually, they're two extremely separate subjects, and they can be tackled one at a time, reducing the difficulty by half. Now, when you're just starting out with defining materials, there is one exercise that's king above all others. And that exercise is balls. Let me explain. For every new material you want to study, all you gotta do is render a simple sphere made up of that material, affected by a single neutral light source. That's all it takes. There's plenty of examples online, 
just search rendering balls on Pinterest and you'll see exactly what I mean, but I don't want you to copy those studies. If you do that, you will learn pretty much nothing. What I want you to do instead is to look up the actual materials and figure out for yourself how to replicate their textures and how they respond to light. Since color isn't essential for this, you can focus purely on the rendering by getting through these studies in grayscale. Once you've done that, you'll slowly but surely become better and better at implementing those materials into your actual artworks. By the way, uh, hey, congrats, you made it to the final section of this video. The last thing I'd like to share with you is a useful tip on how to apply all this to your pieces. Because quite a counterintuitive aspect of good rendering is actually that it's better to render less. What do I mean by that? Well, just like with a lot of other things in art, contrast is extremely important. We want good contrasts between our values, we want good contrasts in our shapes, big ones, small ones, right? Well, turns out that if you render the ever-living out of everything, nothing will truly stand out. So what I'd suggest to do is to pick a few points of interest within your piece and only focus on those. The rest can be left vague and not as defined. In some cases you could even blur it a bit and just like that, the parts you rendered will pop even more in comparison. By the way, if they also happen to line up with uh, the focal points of your composition, even better. And yeah, uh, that's most of what you should know about rendering. It's a huge topic to cover, so I'll probably make more videos about it in the future, as I also learn more about it myself. Hope this one was useful. If that's the case, make sure to leave a like so the algorithm shares it with more people, and uh, also consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on any videos of mine in the future. See ya!